Stephen Richardson, all the way from the Northwest Territories. Hey, Stephen, how are you? Good. How you doing? I'm not doing too bad. It's it's funny. Uh, we were talking before the show, and uh, we have a bit of a history. Obviously, uh, we were we both went to St. Mary's University, and I was you know it's so weird. I was thinking about it today, and I was like, it can't be 30 years ago. That can't be right. And it and it no, is. Not- and it's like, oh, I remember, it's so funny, I, my time, I mean, obviously there were some friends that I met along the way, yourself, uh, Dwight Sampson, uh, you know, uh, Vaughn Woodruff, they, all these names started flooding back to me, <laughs> like, as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, and when I think about you in particular, about those days at university, I, I keep thinking about music, you were very, um, you had a huge love of music, obviously, this is, this is a path you've taken, but Maybe you can walk me through how you got there. Like, where, what what inspired you uh, to dedicate your life to music? Um, well, yeah, it's, like it's, it's crazy. It's been that amount of time. <laughs> and then I try to stay really uh, grateful because it's been a weird, <laughs> it's, been, it's been a very weird path. So, like, when we were in university together at uh, St. Mary's, I'd be um, in the early 90s. And then we were roommates after that in 96. And so you were hardcore into like um, playing music. And there was, I was, I always seemed to be around people that were playing. And I can't remember if you remember, I used to, um, I used to write, like as I was taking um, English and creative writing at St. Mary's. So I was always writing. I'd write lyrics. And then I started making like CDs where I'd, I drew all the pictures and I had like a whole CD. And we'd be having like uh, parties or, and, and different things going on at St. Mary's on the floor. And I go around to all the guitar players and give them the lyrics. Like it would be a fully realized album with a cover, 12 songs, yeah. all drawn, handwritten. A lot of inspiration from Eddie Vedder. I'd see how he wrote in his, uh, in the CD uh, liner notes. And, the, and I, now I understand why, but I, I'd pass it. To, I think I'd probably pass it to you and Shane Underhill playing guitar back then, Aaron McDonald. And Aaron took one of them and he, and he, um, he started putting music to it. But I remember he said when he gave it back, he said, like, some of it isn't, um, like, rhyming and stuff. So okay. Part of it was I, I was so into the hip and Gord Downey. Like, I used to buy hip albums and read the liner notes and just say to myself, how is he going to sing this? Because there was no rhyme yeah. or reason to how it, it. On the paper, it looked more like a poem or very abstract. And That's I right. couldn't see how. I knew it was going to happen. That was what made those albums so exciting with Gord Downey and the hip. But um, I was writing like that. And then once um, I hung out with Aaron and Shane quite a bit, like asking questions and stuff, and they let me sure. pick up their guitar. And I think one of the first songs Aaron tried to show me was uh, Silent Lucidity by Queensryche. And I broke the high E string like at least five, six times. And he's super patient. He never got mad. Like now I realize like that, <laughs> I was constantly breaking the string. And then um, I went to, yeah, I went over to Korea and uh, I brought a guitar with me that's right, right. i thought i was going to go teach in korea and stay there and I, we never ended up staying um and i i learned like a couple of things like a couple of little chords and stuff and i came back and um i was living with with you for a while and you were you and your buddy monty were recording some songs right in the living room and stuff that's and right just got, i got into it and my fiance at the time said why don't you just because i was getting frustrated that no one would take the lyrics and turn them into songs but she had said to me why don't you just try picking it up yourself and this is like so hilarious because at the time i was like you can't pick it up we were like 21 back then i said that's too old like no one can pick up the guitar at 21 and she kept on me and then um i think i asked you to teach me a c chord and a c g and d and then asked your other roommate Corey stone he taught me a c g and d but they were different and at the time i I didn't know who was right so i learned both versions (laughs) and then Shane taught me some, I think Aaron. And so I ended up with like five different versions of those three chords. And now I understand it would be like C add nine or C major seven. Um, yes. But you guys were all calling it oh, B flat. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> it's funny how you pick those things out of, your, out of the air, eh? Like once you've like been... I mean, once you've been uh, exposed to music for so long, I mean, I even I drive in the car and the, the turn signal at one time, I didn't really quite understand how bands would gel and then you'd have that feeling of a pulsation that happens oh, with yeah. a band. And it's like, and that's how I learned it was the turn signals, the click, 
click and I go one e and a two e and a, and try to get <laughs> myself in the group because at the beginning it was like I never I got to be completely honest with you when I heard one two three four at the beginning of a song. I only thought that was to start the song. I had no idea when I first started oh, yeah. out that that was the that was the tempo of, that the song should go in. So sometimes be one, two, three, four, <laughs> and just going crazy on the guitar. So it was like one of those things where I mean, now once you figured that out, that that feeling you have, and nobody you can't explain it to someone really that hasn't played. And it's and it's a it's I mean it's one of those feelings where you get two instruments together whether it's you could do it with your vocal and a guitar too and create that that pulsation, but it's that for me is one of the most addictive parts of music is that and we were talking about it a little bit before the show is that, you know that's the space between the notes and that's sort of where I come up with the name for the show, but it's like but it's those little things though you talked about it there it's like, I mean most musicians are quite i mean the genuine musicians out there that really care about their art form they're more than happy to show people you know a chord here and there and it really you sort of had that same trajectory as, as myself it was my dad who said jeff uh, here's three chords and i learned those three chords and then through friends i learned another chord and next thing you know you're starting to develop this repertoire of chords and it makes it a lot easier obviously songwriting is a, is a different aspect you came at it at a bit of a different uh uh plight where you went uh and were a songwriter first yeah. and your love of songwriting I meaning back in those days maybe tell me talk a little bit about uh those favorite songs and, and the ones that you, that really inspired you well when i was doing like writing those lyrics and passing them out and then uh when i started uh getting all the cg and d chord um it, that was when it really switched because I was I, I didn't think you could do it at that age and then I just went hardcore and I was practicing like eight hours a day and then it started to because at first you're just like hitting breaking strings clunking along and then it gets smoother yep. and a lot of it's like like you said you're piecing you're piecing together a puzzle so one of them was the pick I'm using too light of a pick too hard of a pick whatever it is mm-hmm. the strings are maybe um some of the early guitars I, I just had around us that were, I mean, you could sleep underneath the strings. The, the action was like just unbelievably <laughs> crazy. So that's yeah. like part of like what kind of people like struggle with the instrument. They, they're doing everything right, but they don't know that the instrument is the problem. Yes. So then I bought, um, when I live with you, I think I bought a guitar from Corey Stone. It looked, it was like a Strat copy that was white with rainbow colors on it. Yeah, and I remember that. that. Was, the action was, yeah, the action was a little bit better on that. And then I bought a Yamaha from, I think, Kevin Green. And then I brought that one to Korea. And when I came back, um, yeah, then, yeah. so then when I came back, my mother got lymphoma, and she came and stayed with us in Halifax. We were living right beside the, the VG hospital. And it was about the third chemo. I was, I was playing Zelda. I'm parkouring to Zelda. I was playing uh, whatever one is the first one on the Game Boy, the original Game Boy. And, uh, and we had moved her into our room um, and we were in the living room. And I said, I was just think, thinking, I was like, well, why don't I just take a chance and like find out the audition process for Dow and St. of X and everything. In St. of X, you could do a, a tape and like um, send it in. So I was like, I, I just don't want to like, his life is short. I'll, I'll go after it and see if see what happens. And so I put together that tape. And if you listen to the tape, I have it somewhere. It's on an old Fossex, but I, I learned really hard. I learned over the rainbow, um, a Martin Taylor arrangement. So it was really difficult, but I learned one measure and I, and I same thing. I wasn't aware of the one, e, all that stuff. I would just try to copy it, pause it. Next month, I learned the next measure. And I, <laughs> if you listen to the headphones, you hear click, 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 but it fooled them and I got in and then it was like being dropped into Mars, like having to learn a new language. It was jazz is like unreal. And th- then I got, just I just started asking all the best guitar players uh, there, like different people, how long do you practice? And if they said four hours, I would do eight. And during X, I was doing like 12, 16. Me and my, me and my buddy that ended up being in my first rock band, uh, Violet Lila, he's from Korea. And we used to practice. We'd fall asleep and we'd call each other uh, to wake each other up and we'd practice some more scales. And we'd do that all nice. And then we had um, what we call practice wine, this cheap, conchoitoral wine and then we use that we each bottle was a different set of scales that we had to learn it's just like just foolishness <laughs> but i got uh, for the song any part i was just like 
when I learned those chords, I'd gone around to a lot of parties when I lived with you and asked how to play Nutshell by Alice in Chains. Of course. And at the, at the time, I was so fascinated with the, the chords. I understand it now. I'll grab a... Yeah, yeah, man, grab a... Uh, this is great. Yeah. This is free so, for all, by the way. My show is just... I bought after... I, think oh, I, bought, well, I bought this the second year at X, so it's my mother. I put my mother, uh, she passed away, so I put her picture on it. But it's been, it's definitely worn.